Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. Let's talk about conclusions of hypothesis tests and the errors we can make when we have those conclusions. So the first type or type one error that we can make in our conclusion is to reject a true null hypothesis. So in this case, we go out and we gather our test statistic and we get a rare outcome where that particular test statistic is way out. And it's some weird reading that turns out to be statistically significant. So the probability we get it is really, really low. And so we reject our true no, uh, our null hypothesis. But it turns out that that null hypothesis is correct. We just got a weird reading for some reason. So that's type one error. Then a type two error is to fail to reject a false null hypothesis. So another thing that can happen is we go out and we get our test statistic and that test statistic um, is not statistically significant. It's not way out there. It's near the, the mean in that distribution where we think it should be. And so therefore we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. Let's look at an example. Insurance companies commonly use 1,000 miles as the mean number of miles a car is driven each month. One insurance company claims, due to our more mobile society, the mean is more than 1,000 miles per month. The insurance company tests its claim with a hypothesis test and decides to reject the null hypothesis. Assume that in reality, the mean number of miles a car is driven per month is 1,250. Was an error made? If so, what? Well, let's just look, about, look at some of the things we've learned about so far. So for instance, we know the, the um, alternative hypothesis here is the insurance company is making an, uh, an alternative hypothesis, a research hypothesis. They're saying that the mean is actually more than 1,000 miles. In which case, that means that our null, null hypothesis is the mathematical um, opposite of that, where we take our mean and instead of being greater than, it's going to be less than 1,000. And the null hypothesis always has that equality sign. So then the insurance company goes out and it tests its claim. And remember that 1,000 is here. And we have some normal distribution that 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 statistic is going to be a part of that sampling distribution and the insurance company tests the claim and decides to reject the null hypothesis that means that they had to have gotten some value way out there and what we will learn about as the rejection region so they get some value that's way far out that is statistically significant Assume that in reality, the mean number of cars, uh, miles a car is driven is actually 1,250 miles. So we were assuming that it was this one. We're rejecting the null because it's way out there. So we're rejecting that null and we're saying we think it is more. And it turns out it is more. So there was not an error made. In this case, no error was made. They rejected the null. And sure enough, the mean is larger. So they had support for their claim. And sure enough, it's an actual true claim. So there was no error made in this case. Let's do another example. A study on the effect of television viewing on children reports that children watch a mean of four hours of television per night. Kiko believes that the mean number of hours children in her neighborhood watch television per night is not four hours. She performs a hypothesis test and rejects the null hypothesis. Assume that in reality, children in her neighborhood do watch a mean of four hours of television per night. Did she make an error? If so, what? Okay, let's start by just reviewing some things we know. First, Kiko had an alternative um, hypothesis. She thought that the mean number of um, hours that children in her neighborhood watch is not four. Notice she doesn't say it's greater than or less than. 
She just says it's not four. So mathematically, I'm gonna say the mean is not equal to four. So that's her alternative hypothesis. Now, for the null hypothesis, it's that opposite mathematical statement, and it always includes the equality. So here it's not equal to, but our null is equal to. Then she goes out and performs a hypothesis test. Again, we know that that sample mean that she's going to collect, assuming she gets a simple random sample of at least 30 kids in her neighborhood, and it's random sample, then she could have an, uh, the mean of that sample will be part of a sampling distribution that should be approximately normal with a uh, mean of the same as the population parameter. And she says she rejects the null hypothesis. In other words, she got some value so far out there, either way up here or way down there, that she said that's so statistically significant that I'm gonna reject the null. So she rejected that null hypothesis. Assume that in reality, the children in her neighborhood do watch a mean of four. So she rejected that null. She said, no, they don't watch four, but in reality, they do watch four. So she did make an error. It turns out that she rejected, she rejected a true null hypothesis. So let's look and see which one did she, which error did she make? She made a type one error. She rejected a true null hypothesis. So there she actually came up with information, something really rare, or maybe her sample just wasn't good, something where she rejected her true uh, null hypothesis. Let's do one more example. So here's one last example. A television executive believes at least 99% of households in the United States have at least one television. An intern at the executive's company is given the task of using a hypothesis test to determine if the percentage is actually less than 99%. The hypothesis test is completed and based on the sample collected, the intern, the intern decides to fail to reject the null hypothesis. If in reality, 96.7% of households own a television set, was an error, error made? If so, what? Let's first start with our um, alternative hy hypothesis. What is it that the intern is looking at? What is that intern's um, uh, hypothesis? Well, we're talking about proportions since we're in percents. So that proportion is less than 99% is what they're trying to determine. So they say that their proportion is less than 99%. Then mathematically, if my alternative is um, less than 99%, then mathematically, the opposite of that would be greater than 99%, and the null always includes your equal sign. Then it says the hypothesis test is completed and based on the sample, so again, Proportions are like means in that if we have a sample that's greater than 30 and it's a simple random sample, then we have this normal distribution that we're dealing with. And so let's um, have this normal distribution. And so then they collect a sample and they decide to fail to reject the null. So if we're not rejecting the null, if we're failing to reject it, that means that when we got our statistic, it's somewhere close enough in there so that we don't reject the null. We go, hey, maybe it's okay. We don't have enough evidence to show that that's not true. So, you know, maybe it's there. Or maybe our sample statistic is here. Wherever it is, it's not far enough out. It's not statistically significant. So he says, we're going to fail to reject that. So it does not support this claim that it's less than 99%. Instead, it, it um, supports this where it's at least 99%. If in reality, 96.7%, so this is not true. It turns out that it's not true at all. 
So we should have rejected it since it is less than that 99%. We should have rejected it. We did not reject it. We failed to reject it. So he did make an error. And the error he made was he failed to reject a false null hypothesis. So he made a type two error there. He failed to reject that false null hypothesis. So what we've looked at um, so far is our, when we are making a hypothesis test, the first thing we have to do is come up with our hypothesis. And um, then mathematically, the opposite is that null. We go out, we collect some statistic, and then we see if that test statistic is far enough out, if it's statistically significant. And if it is far enough out, then we reject our null. But if it's not far enough out, then we fail to reject the null. But we have to be careful with that because we can make errors. So we have to understand that these two errors can be made. We can reject a true, true null on occasion, and we can fail to reject a false null. Math made simple. It's some math. Thanks for watching.